So YouTube, this is video number five. I'm in my garage and I'm uh, troubleshooting a problem I had with one of my pistols. So what I have here oh, is my Ruger single six. Uh, it's a great gun. It's a 22 with a, a uh, interchangeable um, cylinder for the 22 Magnum. And uh, it's already been proven safe. So you can see here, there's no ammo in that period. All right. So um, it's hard to do when I'm trying to film at the same time. So the big thing that happened is that this is one of the older models. And this is the little ejector rod, which uh, pops out the um, uh, the cartridge from the back there. And you can see the little handle that you grab onto in order to uh, bring it back and forth broke off when I was being too, um, uh, too rambunctious with it. I was having a lot of fun at the shooting range and just clicking them out like a, a real cowboy. Anyway, uh, so that came off. And if you look close enough, I don't know if I can get a good enough view on that. There you go. For some reason, they made it with white metal. Not a big fan of white metal. Uh, so, because that shit breaks. So, uh, I've been waiting and waiting for my lo local gun shop, which are useless. Absolutely useless. Uh, they've been trying to get uh, an ejector rod in for me for um, almost a year now. And I said, okay, enough's enough. I started uh, looking online, because I have other uh, pistols and so on that I play with. And uh, they just weren't able to get it. Then I find out that they stopped making it for this model. They have the new model, and uh, that doesn't fit the older model. So basically, they just said I'm shit out of luck. So I got to figure out something on my own. So I mean, that's what we do, and that's why I'm going to try using out my tap and die set. So the thought is that I'm going to be able to use uh, the smallest one right here, which is the where is it? The 440 NC, which has the corresponding. Uh, that's the tap, that's the die. And I'm going to use a nail. Might as well look, you know, uh, like I did it myself. I mean, uh, it's it's not the, it's a great gun, but it's not the prettiest gun, it's older. So it'll be funny to have a little nail to uh, go back and forth with. And um, unfortunately, I like I've said in multiple videos, I've uh, just moved into this house. So a lot of my tools are in this shed and I don't have my sander here, uh, which would help me like really make this nice and smooth and so on. So I'm going to do what I can with just the hand tools that I have in my garage here. So I'm going to actually cut it. Normally I would use my grinder. I'm going to cut it by hand. Uh, then I'm going to tap it. I might actually have to... Well, I do have a, a grinder and a sander over there. I might be able to do some of that. Get a good shot of my Deadpool t-shirt. It was a gift. It's actually the most comfortable t-shirt I've got, so I have no choice but to wear it. So whenever you want to take this off, again, always make sure your gun is proven safe. And uh, it's super simple. Um, all you have to do is there's one, one screw right there. So you take that screw off. Don't lose any of your parts, because God knows gun parts are a real pain in the ass to, to acquire. It takes forever and so on. Uh, at least I've found. Maybe some people have better means than I do. Then you see your spring. And now I'm going to put that all right in this tap and die set. The screw. You have your, um, I don't know what you want to call this, your little cylinder that just fits right there. Okay, and then you actually have your ejector rod, and if you can see, there's there's the thick end, and then there's the slender end, and that's what pokes your cartridges out. So it's that simple, it comes off that easily, okay? You can see where it fit in right there, and that's where it screws in, okay? So it's super easy to take apart. So then, it is to figure out whether or not I can actually, uh, well, what I'm gonna do now. Okay, so that is the white metal part right there. I'm gonna file that down. 
and uh, then I'm going to see oh, when, whenever it's nice and um, smooth if I can drill into it. Hopefully she doesn't crack. But again, I got to uh, practice on a couple of other pieces before I uh, go ahead and uh, drill into the actual piece that, I, that I'm going to use because if I use the wrong bit or something like that the first time, I'm screwed. So uh, measure twice, cut once kind of principle. So uh, I'm going to cut the uh, cut the nail and then I'm going to, uh, uh, I will take a video on how to uh, tap and uh, how to uh, use the die on it and then uh, I'll tap another piece of metal and we'll go from there. So I actually grabbed the die that's the next size up and started uh, and now she's working perfectly. And you can I can get this here. Hmm. Mm -hmm. I should actually be doing this with two hands. Sorry, I'll just have to see the uh, end result. Go back and forth like that. Like half a turn, quarter turn back. Half a turn, quarter turn back. That's all we'll need. Sorry, I'm only using an iPhone, but there you go. You have the uh, threads that are on a screw, on a nail head. So you take, I'm going to take those threads. It's got the 6 NC32, which corresponds with the 6 and the um, NC32 so you take this part out and then hopefully that's going to be oh, that's going to be tight it's a tight fit for sure just hoping to use the other one but we'll see I'll uh, drill this into another piece uh, then I'll um, another piece of metal we'll see how that works and uh, we'll go from there so now I'm actually in my father-in-law's garage. So uh, this is how you actually use the tap uh, piece. I showed you how to use the die. So this little thing has a square end on it, which fits into this section. So then what you got to do is, you, uh, I tried this on a, another piece of metal before using this, but so anyway, that is the ejector rod, okay? So you actually have to take a drill, and what I did was, I use um, my drill, uh, my um, drill press is not set up at my house yet, like I say, I haven't uh, really unpacked everything. So anyway, I came over to use his. So I took a drill bit, which is just slightly smaller than um, this so you can see the threads there basically I want it to be thinner than the threads anyway if that makes sense to you so like when you hold it up next to it uh, the the um, you could still see the drill um, the threads past the drill bit like the size of the drill bit so that you know whenever you drill they're still it's still gonna have that um, uh, space that it has to bite into in order to create um, that thread. So anyway, um, I was a little impatient and I uh, tapped it. Um, well, you have to um, uh, tap it with a, a not a hole punch, but um, just a drill punch. And I drilled a little off center, just slightly, but I don't think it's going to be a big deal. So I drilled it on the drill press. Then uh, you. Take this and just as you would with your um, uh, with your uh, die, you go forward half, then back a quarter, forward half, back a quarter, forward half, back a quarter, and that's how you're going to uh, create all the threads you need inside there. So you can see those threads there just slightly. Um, and then, uh, lo and behold, 
the uh, nail and I actually um, I discarded the other piece because I didn't want to um, actually have that big head on it uh, so I just took the other piece that I had cut off what I plan on doing is shortening it uh, once I'm done with it and then that screws on just like so so there it's all done and then I uh, took a, a Dremel tool which I his is set up just like mine right next to his shop took the Dremel tool and I uh, sanded everything down so it's uh, nice and smooth um, so as you can see it's not a hundred percent 90 degree it's slightly up but I don't think that's really gonna matter um, whenever I put it in I'll show you whenever it's all done so now the next step would be to cut this off smooth it out again just with the Dremel tool smooth it out whenever that's all done stick the whole end in a uh, gun blue and that's going to uh, darken it up again get a uh, get it looking all nice and then put it back in I think that's going to fit just perfectly I might actually whenever I have everything there and it's all said and done uh, fitting uh, beautifully I'm going to take a little bit of epoxy or actually I might just take a, some plumber's tape and that's what I'll do I'll take some plumber's tape instead of epoxy that way it's not completely permanent I put it in the threads there and then uh, yeah tighten it up there and that should hold just fine so um, I think that worked out just the way I was hoping it would so again not completely 90 degrees but um, it's gonna provide enough of a, of a handle and uh, I don't think that will really matter so there wasn't a whole lot left to the end of this step so I came home and uh, with my hacksaw cut it off um, and then I took you can see there got a little nub uh, then I took my uh, Dremel tool and just rounded off the edges so it's uh, not sharp um, unfortunately I just realized I ran out of gun blue it's like two three dollars a Canadian tire no big deal and then um, she uh, she fits in I already checked she fits in the gun nicely um, I'll have to uh, stop put her together again and uh, show you but no it's um it works uh, it ain't pretty but it works now I want to mention earlier you saw me holding it like this and doing other things uh, again it was proven safe and I wasn't pointing at myself as the uh, video looked like it uh, like it was uh, it was pointing like beside me so anyway uh, with gun safety uh, you never want to uh, have any shortcuts take any shortcuts um, so Always make sure she's pointed in the right direction and always um, ensure she's uh, not uh, loaded. So then I'm literally going to just put this right back together and show you exactly what it looks like. There. So you can see, she's half cocked. I might have to put a little bit of, oh, there we go. She's sliding nice and easy now. You can see that ejector rod is coming right out there. So that's it. A simple fix solution. And otherwise, you know, um, not solvable with buying an actual piece so uh, that cost me absolutely nothing uh, if I wasn't videotaping this it probably would have taken me about 20 minutes to fix videotaping this took me a little bit longer but um, hey a nail and a little bit of time that's all she took all right YouTube that was my fifth video hope you enjoyed it let me know if there's anything else you want to see 
Um, I think the next thing I'm going to do is build a uh, uh, speed bag stand. So uh, hope you guys enjoy that.